of 2001, the Halo franchise was officially off to a strong start. Halo Combat Evolve was the Xbox's killer app, steadily selling 1 million copies in just 5 months. Eric Nyland's prequel novel, The Fall of Reach, was a bestseller in its own right. With one tie-in novel success on their hands, Microsoft inked a deal with publisher Del Rey for a continuing series. The first book would be Halo The Flood, written by the science fiction writer William C. Dietz. The Flood released in April 2003, and despite being a novelization of the game millions had already played, or perhaps because of it, the book went on to become a publisher's weekly bestseller as well. It's fair to say that fan opinion of The Flood was more muted than The Fall of the Reach, but on The Flood's 17th anniversary, it's worth revisiting this book and seeing how what could have just been a rote repetition of the plot beats of the video game instead became an important building block for the widening scope of the universe. William C. Dietz came to writing later in life after a variety of jobs, including serving as a combat medic. And I had told myself that I would write a book by the time I was uh, 40, and my 39th birthday rolled around and I hadn't even started a book. So I sat down and, and I wrote a, um, a space opera, a book about an intergalactic bounty hunter named Sam McCade. And uh, amazingly enough, I sent it in and it sold the first place I sent it, the first time I sent it. Dietz got an Xbox and spent hours in the campaign to familiarize himself with the game. And while Dietz's interpretation of the Chief was criticized for being substantially different than that of Nyland's, it's much closer to that of Chief in the video games. For really the only time in the books, the reader is the Master Chief in a tangible sense, just like the video game. Obviously, when you play a game like this, um, you can often defeat whatever enemy you're uh, confronting with in different ways. It's not just one way to do it. And that's part of what makes it such a great game. And so, yeah, I tended to write the book using the strategy that I liked best or that I had discovered or I thought was cool or, or maybe in some cases it was the only way I'd found to get the job done, right? Uh, and so it would have some of that flavor. Dietz's chief reacts the same way players did to some of the quirks of Combat Evolve's gameplay or the loop of being ordered around by Cortana. More importantly, Dietz was the first author to start laying down much more track for the chief-Cortana relationship. In the game, their relationship is mostly just quips back and forth. Sleep well? No thanks to your driving, yes. So you did miss me. But Dietz highlights how the nature of their relationship deepens during the events of the game. Chief has to adapt to possibly being the only Spartan left in existence, while Cortana has to trust in the Chief to survive an extremely hostile environment. It's a totally fair criticism to point out that the Flood includes a lot of gameplay sequences that were fun in the game, but became stultifying in the page. But while I wouldn't go so far as to say the relentless monotony of the combat sequences are actually the whole point, Dietz does what he can to make them part of the deeper characterization of Chief. By the end, the chief is tired of killing too. To leaven a task that he probably anticipated would be a little tedious to say nothing of less than creatively fulfilling. I wanted to be able to bring something to it. And, you know, um, so negotiations ensued and um, I asked for permission to insert new material in between cutscenes, certain cutscenes. Uh, and that, of course, required dropping some cutscenes to make room for the material I was adding. And it's here the novel really shines. Combat Evolve was a pretty contained story following Chief and Cortana across the Halo ring. It's only in the Flood that all those other Marines you encounter get inner lives, characterization, and readers understand the scale of the conflict on Alpha Halo. These supplementary narratives start with the stories of the orbital drop shock troopers, led by Antonio Silva and his second-in-command, Melissa McKay. The ODSTs were in some ways still in a very embryonic form in the Flood, but Dietz followed Nyland's lead in showing the disagreement and bad blood between some ODSTs and the Spartans. In Silva, Halo gets one of its first and few human characters who is allowed to really thread the line between hero and villain. 
Silva's courage and tactical ability is unquestionable, but his dislike for the chief is a major blind spot, and his personal desire for glory nearly leads him to loose the parasitic flood menace on the galaxy. His foolhardy plans are ended by McKay, who blazes the trail for other gung-ho empathic squad leaders like Sergeant Lopez and Edward Buck. McKay spends the entire book worrying about keeping her soldiers alive, but is ultimately forced to kill them all to stop the spread of the flood. It's a tragic story that explains just what happened to all those doomed marines we never saw again in the video games, while also offering up broader questions on the nature of service and sacrifice. And then there's Jenkins. In the game, the character doesn't even show up, he's just a damaged helmet whose camera footage serves as a moody atmosphere setter for the surprise of the Flood's appearance. In the Flood, Deeds makes Jenkins into one of the franchise's most pitiable characters, as he remains acutely aware of his transformation into a Flood combat form, and attempts to end his life to stop the unceasing horror of it all. The horror of the Flood also comes out with the fate of Captain Keys, another element barely in the games, but turned into a terrifying series of running vignettes as Keyes stubbornly refuses to submit to the Flood, even as he's slowly being consumed for information. If there's one thing Dietz does that Combat Evolved did not, it's bring a visceral level of horror and violence to the events of the game. Combat Evolved is in many ways a cartoony game. Enemies are thrown like rag dolls and gush cartoonish amounts of blood. In contrast, the descriptions of combat in the Flood feel a bit more like the beach scene in Saving Private Ryan. At one point, a human sniper is ripped in half and is still screaming as he falls into a pile of his intestines. The Flood especially become a far more scary and visceral threat than the graphics of a 2001 console could demonstrate. But perhaps more consequential to the wider Halo universe is Dietz's exploration of the Covenant. Until the Flood, the Covenant mostly were just interesting enemies that existed to fight the player and die. In the Flood, the first inklings of the dynamics of the caste-based system and politics come to the front, and I don't think Dietz gets enough credit for making virtually all of them feel as rounded as the human characters. The Flood gives us names for these Covenant characters, and even the first action from the perspective of a hunter pair. The Covenant often breaks stereotypes with the heroic Ungoy Yaya setting the path for future badass grunts like Stolt and Dadab. Yaya embarks on a series of tragically funny escapades with Zuka Zamami, an elite who is consumed with trying to kill the chief. Deeds turns several of Master Chief's engagements with the Covenant into botched ambushes by Zamami, and makes the elite the last coordinated resistance the player faces after destabilizing the Autumn's engines. While Dietz details some of the friction between elites and prophets that would blossom into the open hostilities of Halo 2, the elites in particular never feel like a stereotypical, honorable warrior race times would devolve into in later expanded media. They range from frontline warriors to spies to bureaucrats. The other major groundwork Dietz lays down is something that wouldn't become a major liminal part of the Halo universe until Greg Bear ran off with it. The concept of a Gesh that Reclaimers were humans with a special genetic code that allowed them to instinctively operate foreigner machinery. In a single side passage, Dietz actually sets the stage for a huge thematic and narrative core to Halo's fiction. The book's legacy has cropped up here and there in recent years, with Key's tragic story turned into the most affecting terminal in the 2011 re-release Combat Evolved Anniversary. More recently, characters and parts of the game form the basis for the plot of the arcade shooter Fireteam Raven giving us our first look at characters like Wellesley and Silva. Ultimately, The Flood was a foundational book that expanded the universe almost as much as The Fall of Reach did, and provided a human core to match the action of the video game it was based on. Hey everyone, David from Forward Onto Dawn here. This is a short video companion to a longer form article you can read on our site, forwardontodawn.com. Subscribe and share our content if you liked it, and thanks for watching.